if you're, if you're going 50 50 then you're a roommate so it doesn't have to come from a place of, of money the weak men that that think that it's all about the money you know it's all about how much do i have in the bank and they base their self-worth on that that's where the issue comes in what the, what is the woman's role actually in the relationship do you the woman's role is to receive <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> you know the the masculine the masculine is the giver and the and the feminine is the receiver the woman's role in the relationship is to receive and to nurture you know we are the nurturers is if the woman is burned out and she's in her masculine and she's having to do everything and then the man comes and asks for sex there's the polarity because she's so in her masculine <laughs> So uh, welcome to Better Yourself Podcast. This is your boy Frank Rice, and today um, we have a, a special guest. Uh, her name is Nicole. We're gonna talk about relationship. We're gonna talk about money, actually. So anything related to, related to money. If a man can actually do 50-50 with a woman, or if you have to do more based on how much you get paid, or if it's like not being money enough actually to pay more. So I think things are changing. Back in the day, things was different. In today's society, things are changing a lot. So I'm just gonna see my guest what are his opinion about this as well so before we start nicole i just want to introduce yourself so people are going to know who you are sure um hi my name is nicole harmony and i'm a transformation coach for men and basically what i do is i help men uh, reclaim their their purpose their polarity and their yeah. partnership so they can fulfill, uh, live a fulfilled life so that's me in a nutshell Great. <laughs> all right so uh wh why did you want to jump in this topic because i know it's not really like people taking it different ways so what, what what was the first thing what makes you actually decide to kind of like join this conversation so it's interesting because um you know coming into the polarity space for men uh you know men are they've been taught their entire lives you know you have to provide you have to provide you have to provide and then we have a, the women come along and say, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a woman. I don't need a man. I don't need a man. And then I'm like, mm. and I used to be one of those women. I used to be one of those women that, you know, didn't need a man. And, um, since then I figured out that that was me really in my masculine. I was really, really strong in my masculine and I was exhausted and I was frustrated and, you know, everything that comes along with it. And, um, and so I, when I started studying polarity, I realized that when the man doesn't feel like he can lead, then it's emasculating, you know, to the man. And um, so I encourage, I encourage now women, I'm like, allow, the, if, you ever, if you're going 50-50, then you're roommates, you know, you're not, or you're just friends. You're not, there's not a true leader in the relationship. There's not a true leader in the partnership. So. Um, so yeah, I, I used to have the same, the same views where it was like 50, 50. And, but when you're coming from that place of wanting to pay 50, 50, you're coming from a place of, of, of wounding, you know, you're, you're wanting to please in a different way, instead of just standing in your true divine, uh, sexual essence as a feminine goddess. Wow. So, so what, for what I can see there's one thing you actually say was very good if you feel like the man have to be feel like he's actually in control like he's in powers as well but do you think you can only feel that way when it comes to money because it's oh, so no. easy to say like, oh no yeah. no yeah no definitely i mean it all starts with your purpose you know if you do not if, you, if a man <clears throat> you know a true the true sexual essence for a man going back to the caveman days you have to get up and have your why you know you have to get up and chase that that saber tooth tiger you know or whatever it is <laughs> you have to go out yeah. and hunt and if you don't have that purpose if you don't have that vision every single day to wake up and facilitate your day and have your why underneath the why then you're losing that that true divine masculine sexual essence so it doesn't have to come from a place of of money it just comes from a place of I'm going out there and I have my purpose and I'm going to make, you know, the world a better place no matter what, you know, no matter if I have $50 in the bank or $50 million in the bank, you wake up and you have your purpose. Okay. So I had a conversation like that about with somebody as well, because 
now we have a lot of women what about we have a lot of women today who build everything by their own as well like you know she have a good job let's say we are together and you earn like let's say i earn maybe like 2k a month and then the woman learn, earn like more than me like let's say she earned like 5k a month right this is just like roughly so mm -hmm. how is it gonna work do a man have to feel like to still go over or they have to be like okay you get paid more than me your your your, ver your revenue is like three times more than me so i shouldn't actually just do half half because it's not when i work i'm gonna have like financial problem so what do you think about that or a man should just do like this relationship kind of work because i cannot have a woman that earn more than me no definitely not i mean you can definitely have a, a female breadwinner but it doesn't and again, it doesn't have to come down to money. You know, you you decide on the lifestyle that you want to have together, and the mm. woman really just kind of has to relax into her feminine. It it takes a very, it takes a woman to go from her her strong masculine, you know, feminine masculine, because we have to be in our masculine. We all have feminine masculine energies, right? So mm. we all yeah. have to be in our masculines to get stuff done. You know, to to get those businesses done, to have the career, to, you know, take care of the kids. But at the end of the day, you have to come home and you have to know how to disconnect from that masculine energy and come into the feminine. And then the same thing with men, you know, the, the men, you know, are in their masculine majority of the time, but it's okay to oscillate back and forth between the masculine and the feminine. So you decide on what kind of lifestyle, what kind of roles you want to play and it's okay if the man can't go out and buy the, you know, $1 million house and, and the yeah. woman can, there's other ways to take leadership. It doesn't have to do it. It doesn't have to only resolve in money, you know, um, as far as like finances are concerned. And, um, you know, just a, a big one is, <laughs> I don't know why this is like the old age uh, thing, but wanting to you know where are we going to go for dinner tonight it's so refreshing as a woman for a man to just be like you know what i'm going to come and pick you up be you know be ready i have reservations at 7 30 we're going here you know kind of thing and a lot of women are like i you can't tell me what to do and i'm like oh my god i would be just like <laughs> awesome <laughs> just one last thing i have to think about um so again, you know, just taking those leadership roles away from the things, these little teeny tiny, like tedious little things that can really bog mm. down the woman as the feminine and just letting her relax, you know, just letting her relax into her, her true feminine energy. I don't know if that answers your question, but. <laughs> I think you asked my good question a lot because the thing is the way you responded, you was quite smart the way you responded because when people talk about 50-50, people always push the money side they don't really, yeah. I've never heard any, every time I have this topic with somebody, people always push the 50, 50 when it comes to money. They never talk about all the stuff like, or like, okay, like, you know, mental support or like, as you say, if you want to take, um, decide something, you go on a date or you go to the restaurant, you have to be the one actually kind of like lead because the way you are saying is more into like leadership. You have to be the one that organize stuff, you know, see things ahead, push things, you know, it makes sense what you're actually saying, but people don't say things that way. So what yeah. you're telling me, like, okay, what about if for you financially, if the woman actually earned more money, do you think, even though the man is doing all those things that you say, doing that in a way, do you still feel like it's okay for when it comes to finance to a woman sometimes to pay more because she earned more money? Or it's actually no fair. You as a man, you still, you, you like one of my friends told me, like you as a man, you you are built to fight to always trying to gain more and more and more. So do you think? What do you think about it? So I think it's really going to uh, depend on you know the two individuals and how they feel. You know, really have that conversation. Is this going to make you feel bad? You know, is this going to make you feel like less of a man? You know, have those deep, intimate conversations mm. and communicate and. You know, if if the man is like, no, you know, that doesn't make me feel comfortable, then, you know, that's when the compromise comes in. And again, it comes down to lifestyle. If if you if the woman, you know, has this lifestyle and she wants to, you know, drive the Bentley or, you know, whatever, and then the man, you know, can't necessarily 
afford to give that to her, that she gives that to herself, then it balances out in other ways. You know, is he a strong leader in other parts of the relationship? And it takes, again, it just takes a strong man in his masculine, the weak men that, that think that it's all about the money, you know, it's all about how much do I have in the bank? And they base their self-worth on that. That's where the issue comes in. But when you're really anchored into your masculine and into your true masculine, and then you have a feminine woman who can come out of her masculine and oscillate between the two in a healthy way, then that's when that's the recipe for a healthy relationship that is somewhat imbalanced as far as like finances are concerned. Well, I mean, that, that, that's that's so right, because so as long as long as you can actually push the balance when you come to all the area of the relationship, you can actually switch back. And even if the money, you don't have a good balance, she can still provide more. But as long as you are being a man in a relationship, because she can't have the money, but you're going to be the one deciding this is what we're going to do. This is how we're going to, you know, do things in the house. I think you're still going to have that kind of leadership. And as you say, I think weak men are the one that actually feel like only focus on the money because they see money as as the tool that actually them make them feel more like a man. So when there's no money, they don't really see their worth because they only measure themselves based on the money. Correct. So what I can Correct. Remember. Correct. Yes. How much? So, uh, you know, what material? What that, material that's, that's gifts a, do you have? Yeah. So Sorry, I think it's crazy because this conversation is always around the, it's fine. This conversation is always around the money. Everybody want to talk yeah. about it. That means, do you think most people actually just like mentally, I we say they're mentally weak. They don't mind enough people that see things that way. Oh yeah, absolutely. There's a lot. We, you know, I did a podcast a few weeks ago and we are really pussifying our men, you know, and the women are in, <laughs> you know, we're, we're kind of leading the way with that too. Um, but, you know, we need to create more warriors, not more, not more weaklings, you know, more, not more savages. Um, and then also, you know, coming from, you come from a place of scarcity when you think you don't have enough, right? So, or when mm. you, when you're, I mean, it's, it's great to have goals, but you have to yeah. realize that what you are enough, you know, the way that you are, you are enough for everybody. And if you just can remember that, and then continue to wake up, you know, have your goals, have your purpose that you're driving towards, um, really working on, you know, yourself and, and working on that polarity, you know, working on oscillating between the man, the masculine and the feminine, you know, being vulnerable, showing those emotions, that type of thing. Um, that's going to, that's, what's going to create these strong men that we're needing to, to lead the, the fight, you know, the warriors that we're needing to lead this fight between um, good and evil, you know, what's going on in the world right now. That's a whole other subject, but. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, I, I do, I do understand. <laughs> I, I do respect your view as well. I think I actually share the same view as you. So you as a woman today, do you feel like men, we are being like less than men, you see? The way society is actually going right now, do you think men are being more like uh, becoming weak and fragile? They're not really yes. playing the role. Do yeah. You think we're Absolutely. Yeah, we have, you know, I, I was writing down some statistics right before we jumped on. And one reason why I decided to start working with men uh, exclusively is because I see the need, you know, the mental health that we're suffering, you know, the epidemic that we have in society, not just in America, all over the world um, with our men is, you know, it, it's staggering to, to look at the statistics the statistics and that's partly because we have so many weak masculines you know out there we have so many um you know little boys walking around in men's bodies and we have a lot of little girls walking around in women's bodies too but we have a lot of little boys that grew up in uh broken homes you know and so they were majorly um raised by their moms you know and so they had more of that feminine energy within them rather than having that that strong balance of the masculine and the feminine um so you know a few statistics that i wrote down you know 76 percent of suicides are men and 85 percent of the homeless people out there are men and 70 percent of homicide victims are men 40 percent domestic abuse are men it, you know 
these things have to be solved or we're, we're going the wrong way. You know, we need to, we need to really kind of like pump the brakes and realize that we need to have this safe space for men to be able to share their pain, you know, share their emotions. So, yeah. Yeah. I think you, you really touched like a, a point like you actually very important because you say these days we have a lot of men actually committing suicide as well. A lot of people are losing their life and we are becoming weak. People are talking about people taking their life away. A lot of men, you know, as you just say, they, people are not trying to focus on the problem. Yeah. We are just talking about the mental health roughly because it's so easy to talk about mental health. Mental health is so global. It's so, it's so large. It's, it's very hard to kind of like focus. I think we should just like go to the, you know, to the root of the problem and trying to find out what is the problem. As you say today, many men, we actually not playing our role anymore. There is a lot of frustration yeah. as well. Do you think is it because, okay, society today changing the way men are, how can it actually impact them mentally? Because what is the relation between men being, changing the way they are being weak and actually having more men actually taking their own life away? So what is the, the connection? The connection to the me? mental health and the, yeah, you kept lagging yeah. a little bit. So I kind of lost a little Sorry, bit of yeah, the question. On. Yeah. Um, okay. what, what I was saying, like, what is today the, the connection between men committing, uh, uh, like, you know, doing, being suicidal, suicidal and men becoming actually weak because of the way society is built up today? So uh, great question. Um, I mean, it's my belief that the connection is you know, again, they don't feel like that they can do any uh, anything right. Um, mm. You know, I witnessed this in in uh, my upbringing, and then because of the way that my mom was with my dad, that's kind of how I was taught. And I'm having to reinvent the wheel at this point. Um, so they don't feel like that they can do anything right. They don't feel like they don't feel like that they're enough, and society is failing them in all different ways, shapes, and forms. Um, coming in, you know, once again with, you know, just society in general, we're becoming weak uh, just with the programming and, and the um, uh, conditioning, you know, that, that we are experiencing every single day, uh, getting the consuming of the, the toxic chemicals of the, the porn, the social media, you know, all of these things. Uh, there's so many, there's so many different uh, options out there to numb the uh just the masculine mind you know just uh dr i think it was dr dr dieta um the way of the superior man i believe i pronounced that correctly a man that does not have a purpose and does not walk wake up with that feeling of a purpose then they give up and that's not necessarily in a form of giving you know taking your life away giving up on your life but coming home and binge watching tv binge watching uh porn uh doing the dating apps you know that's another form of numbing of numbing you know this these emotions and this pain that needs to be set down in a safe space and where they're not going to be shamed um so to answer your question in a very long about way is the connection is just not being understood, you know, by society and not being looked at as, as being allowed to, to feel this pain. Many people talk about this conversation about the 50, 50, always focus on the money, but the, mm. the point that you actually just touched now, I really like it because you're actually helping men to become themselves to actually take their place a lot of people today are struggling yes. that they feel like we are we just don't know how to be a man anymore and a woman just yeah. doesn't know how to be a woman as well because they are not yeah. playing their part as well so yeah. i know you spoke about the 50 50 how men can actually step up so what do you think is the most important things for as a man to do you for coming from a woman what do you think is the most important things to for really you to feel like we are become yeah go ahead uh, to really be that leader. And, you know, that encompasses doing the work on yourself. You know, uh, again, we have all these little boys and these little girls walking around in these grown men and grown women, bod grown women bodies. And we really have to start looking at when, when we're triggered, you know, in a relationship and we're inevitably going to be triggered in a relationship. And if you're not being triggered in your relationship, 
then you're not in the right relationship <laughs> because that's what relationships are there. You know, it's the hospital for the soul is yeah. the way that the Latin um, explain it. And we really need to start doing that, that inner work on ourselves. We need to start looking at and taking accountability, you know, for what is going on in our life, we create our own reality. So if you're not liking the way that your life is going and somebody is, you know, bothering you, it's really inside of you that you have to look at. So coming back to our true selves, doing that inner child healing, you know, that work on ourselves, seeing what patterns and programs and belief systems that we were given in our, in our upbringing, you know, between the ages of zero and 18 years old, by the ages of zero and zero to seven, we're pretty much given our belief systems, you know, and then after seven to eight, seven to 14, I believe, um, you know, that's when the patterns start to occur. And then 18 and, and, you know, after that, yeah, that's when, you know, the, the bad patterns, you know, start to occur and the self-sabotaging starts to occur. So yeah, it's, um, it's really just starting to do that work on yourself and, it being in a relationship, you know, you have that container, you're creating that container to do that work and being able to hold one another in those vulnerable positions. That's really true intimacy. And I, I know I'm getting like off on to, you know, little tangents no, here, no. but, but yeah, sense. it's, it's all encompassing. Yeah. I mean, like I agree completely what you're actually saying. It actually makes sense because me as a man, I'm not going to lie to you. Sometimes we actually get it confused. We just don't know what to do, when to step up. Yeah. Sometimes you're just going to be too much. And sometimes you get emotional. You don't just know how to communicate. But it's one thing to want a man to be that person for him to be a man. But what about a woman? Because I feel like as much as we talk about men, but women don't really like when we talk about their role in a relationship. That's the kind of thing that actually people don't, don't talk too much about like what the, what is the woman role actually in the relationship do you think? the woman's role is to receive yeah. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> you know the the masculine the masculine is the giver and the and the feminine is the receiver the woman's role in the relationship is to receive and to nurture you know we are the nurturers so the woman's I mean, I hate to say it, but, you know, going back to the 1950s, they kind of had it right at that point. And then everything got, you know, upset at the apple cart <laughs> whenever, <laughs> uh, you know, feminism started to come into play. And now feminism has this kind of between vulnerability in men and feminism in women. You know, those are the two stigmas that we're dealing with in society and modern society. And, you know, back in the 1950s, you know, we, we kind of had it right where, you know, the woman's role was to, you know, to be that, be that nurturer, you know, in the, in the household. Um, I personally love to cook for, for my man, for my partner, for the family, you know, that's, that's my way of, of giving, you know, if, and then just receiving that, you know, that love and that nurturing from other family members. It's so, yeah, I mean, when it comes down to it, I know that it's just going to sound ancient, but the man's role is to give and the woman's role is to receive and not giving necessarily monetarily, giving that love, giving that support. And then the woman just needs to stand there and receive and that feminine radiance and just having her feminine radiance and having that balance of that feminine energy with that strong mm. masculine you know, that's, that's enough for him. He doesn't have to have all of these presents and gifts and, you know, let me take you on this trip and let me, let me do these things for you. No, you know, it's, it's about the woman and having, being able to receive. And I know that that is something that women struggle with. Me personally, I still do, but I'm learning, you know, and if we can just step up and say, Hey, you know what? We don't know but at least we're going to start trying to figure it out rather than, well, I don't need no man. Well, I don't need no woman. You know, <laughs> majority of my clients, they come to me and they're like, I'm tired of dating. I don't want to date anymore. I'm going the other way, you know, the lone wolf syndrome. And I'm like, no, that's, that's like the collapse of society. As we see it, we have to have these relationships. You know, we, 
we can't just go off on our own little deserted islands. There's not enough, first of all, <laughs> you know, yeah, in the I world. Think, uh, yeah, but I feel like we have to go, like, you know, people, we have to go back to the way we used to be before. Yeah. Back in, yeah. you know, a few years ago, I think that's the kind of thing that we need to go back and then to be like, people are going to call it old school. I think that's, that's, that's what we have to be anyway. There's something that you just yeah. say here before we wrap it up. You, you actually struggle. What do you struggle on? Like to, to struggle to receive? Like, what, what do you mean by that? So, I, I mean, I grew up in a very strong masculine female house, so it was yeah. very hard for me to learn how to receive because that was not the belief system that I was instilled with. That's not what I learned. So it's just been a recent thing, you know, within the last three to four years, maybe even more than that, on being able to just receive because I was basing my worth on what I could give to the relationship, you know? Mm. And now I know that I just need to be working on myself, be my true sexual, you know, su sexual essence, feminine essence, and that's enough. And that is enough with the right man, you know, with a strong leader. But if I'm with a man who is not, you know, in his strong masculine and expects me to, you know, give 50, 50 or, or 70, you know, 30 or, you know, whatever it is, then that's not the right, right relationship for me. That's not the right partnership. And a lot of women just need to kind of come to grips with that, where it's not about your, you're not anchoring your self-worth on how much you can give to the relationship as far as like financially is concerned or, okay. or really, you know, anything you have to have that leader in the relationship you have I think, to just to be clear for people who listen to this i think what you mean by that is a man have to be a man you have to be a leader yeah uh, you don't have to just focus around the money if it happened for your woman to yeah. actually earn more money than you that's not a problem she's gonna pay most of the, the bill you're gonna pay the rest but it's just gonna be done in the like in a gentleman way and in a controlling way as well not healthy control sorry no like you know in brutal way just like like in a protecting way like look you earn yes. more i earn this we're gonna work it out this is how we're gonna be we're gonna have a stable life it's all our money and yeah still gonna be in control you know like i think that's the most important because like we, we we always think like because you have more money in the bank you just like spend on this i buy this i buy that and then that's the yeah. reason why we have a lot of money issue as well because we use our ego Instead of being mm -hmm. a man, we actually use our ego. I'm not going to lie to you. Us men, we use our ego a lot. Yeah. Instead oh, yeah. Of Absolutely. Using our masculinity, yeah. 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 You can be a strong masculine man and have $20,000 and, you know, make $20,000. I mean, it's all about how you anchor in, how you anchor into your purpose. Are you able to be vulnerable? Are you able to show that vulnerability and, and be humble and humility and, you know, have that humility of, I don't know, you know, I don't, I don't know what's going on, but I do know that I'm going to write this ship. I do know that I'm the captain of this ship and I do know that I'm going to be able to protect you. I'm going to be able to support you emotionally, financially, spiritually, you know, as long as you can convey that to your woman and, and really like have that energy and portray that out to every single person that walks, you know, within your space, then, you know, it doesn't matter how much money you have in the bank. You know, I'm so tired of hearing these men and I, you know, quite frankly, argue with a lot of them all the time. I'm like, it doesn't matter. You can be, you can be the most, you know, I did, actually, I did a reel about this not too long ago. You can have $50 million in the bank or $50 in the bank. If your personality and your healing and your you know, whatever your belief system is not on point, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter, you know, to a true woman, to a true woman, a feminine woman that is standing in her true divine fe feminine sexual essence. It doesn't matter. You can be drop dead gorgeous and, you know, look like a toad in the time that you could clock an egg timer. I mean, it, it really doesn't matter. You have to have that true sense of you. You have to have gone deep within yourself done that healing on yourself come back to that true you man this is this is beautiful what you're saying you know is uh but do you think it's too late for a man to become that person for oh, men God, to feel no. like do you no. think is this something like you can <laughs> you can learn to become you can actually i know we have in our in us because in our dna right 
Do you think it's something like it's really hard for a man, like when it comes to the point you've been too slow to this? Do you think is it something like you can actually get up and then become that person? Oh, yeah, absolutely. It's never too late. It really, and you know, speaking from my 82 year old father, uh, my mom was out of town, so I was able to be with him, just he and I, because I was, he's in that point of his life where he's forgetful. So we needed somebody to be there, you know, when my mom was out of town. And me just, and she's a very strong female masculine, but me just being in that relaxed feminine state, he was able to take the lead for the first time in a very long time. I don't even know how many years, but, and he's 82. So it really depends on how much of the woman is in her feminine as to how strong the masculine can come out. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. So you can't have a weak masculine and a strong uh, masculine feminine, you know, the polarity is not there. Um, and then you can't have a weak, uh, feminine and have a strong masculine because then he'll just run all, he'll just run over, you know, and won't, re won't respect her or, and then the polarity is again off. So it's just about having that balance. But, um, again, to ask, to answer your question, it's never too late. You know, that's actually what my program, uh, is surrounded by. It's a six month program we focus on the purpose, we focus on the polarity, we focus on the partnership. You know, those are my three pillars that I, that we focus on for six months. And, you know, we do a lot of um, limiting and program clearing, and we also do the um, inner child healing at the same time. We really get through, you know, a lot of that trauma and allowing them to be those strong men. You know, half the time, majority of the time, probably 80 to 90% of the time, when we're going around during the day and we're sabotaging our daily, that's our, that's our little one doing that. That's our little one driving the bus. So really, you know, again, just, it's never too late. It really isn't. You know, the beautiful part of it, I feel like we need to learn how to have this kind of conversation because I'm glad I'm talking to you as a man, you are a woman, I'm talking to you. You are telling me exactly how you feel. But when people in a relationship, it's very hard to have those kind of conversation, you know. People just yeah. gonna tell you like, you know what, I'm expecting so much from you. Why you don't do this? You know, people complain and the man gonna be like, oh, you know, I want somebody. That's why people gonna go out and they're trying to find somebody else because we're not getting mm. that person in your home. And we're just trying to get what, what we miss at home, we get it somewhere else. And then we're just trying to collect the puzzle. So why is it so hard to for a woman to just tell the truth without hurting our ego? Well, so the first thing that you said was expectation. You can't ever go into a relationship with expectations. That's the root of all evil, basically. Mm, really? um, oh yeah, absolutely. You can't expect anything from your partner. You can't expect anything from yourself. All you can do is try to be the best version of yourself but no expectations. It's not anybody's job to make you happy. It's, you know, your own job to find your own joy and your own happiness and your own peace within you. And mm. then, you know, you come into relationship and that is where there is the give and take. You know, you don't, you don't go into a relationship to take, you go in to give. If you get something back, you're not taking it. But if you get something back and you receive it, then there's that difference. You know, there's, there's just that difference. But as far as like for a woman, you know, again, that's that's a woman being in her true feminine sexual essence, creating that space. A lot of the men want to go into their man cave and we can just kind of hold their hand and be like, I'm here. I'm, if you want to go into your man cave, okay, I understand that and I respect it, but I'm going to hold your hand just a little bit out here just to know that I'm creating the safe container for you to be emotional with me. Hmm. And that goes back to the vulnerability. You know, men are like, uh, there's a specific podcast that comes to mind. I'm not going to call it out, but, you know, mm -hmm. they say that vulnerability is a sign of weakness. And I'm like, no, <laughs> it is, that is the sign of true, deep intimacy. And if you can be emotional and vulnerable with your woman, that's when you read the, the depths of the intimacy that you're wanting. That's when you're reaching that connection. Because how are you going to hold her and her emotions if you can't hold your own? Uh, there is one person, I don't know if you heard about him. He always online these days talk about, he's like a real, like a new figure of masculinity today. 
Uh, his name is Andrew something. I don't know if you heard about him. Oh, Andrew Tate? Uh, yes. So <laughs> what is your opinion on him, actually? Because I think I, I really want to know. <laughs> because um, everything that you're saying now is that version, but a little bit extreme, I would say. But what do you think? Um, so I have mixed, I have mixed reviews about him. I don't, I don't know him. I don't know his work like 100%. So I can't speak to it that well. I just know what I see on social media and things like that, but I haven't really been able to dive into his work so much. But, um, I think that he's getting a bad rap because, uh, a lot of women are saying he's misogynistic and, you know, that type of thing. And I think that that's coming again from a wounded position of the female, of the feminine. If a man, if he's being looked at as misogynistic and a red pill society, which don't even get me started on that, um, then that's coming from a wounded feminine position from what I've been able to see so far without really diving into his work so much. But, but yeah, I mean, it, I understand that a lot of women are not going to agree with me and I get that, but there's far more resources for the women to start embracing their more feminine energy and getting away from, if you don't, you know, put a ring on it and, uh, yeah. you know, I don't need no man, I'm going to buy my right hand ring and you know, <laughs> this, that, and the other. And just like, I don't, I don't need a man either because needing is coming from a place of scarcity. I want somebody to go and do life with, to move through life with, that's going to support me and who I'm wanting to become. And then I can in turn support them, you know, partnership, going back to Adam and Eve, <laughs> you know, if you want to go there, it's mm -hmm. like, we all have to, you know, we all have to have these support. You can't just go and live out on your own on a deserted island. That's not the way to go. Yeah. I mean, I totally agree. But do you think like, what is it doing? Is it kind of like helping men to kind of like wake up as well? Because the type of men that you're saying, like they're actually sleeping. Do you think somebody like him is not needed? Because now we, we're starting to have those kind of conversation because he's talking a lot about men, how the men should be and everything. Do you think it's not, you know? Yeah, no, I think that that's actually a really good direction. Again, I can't speak specifically to his teachings. Um, one thing that I feel like I can bring to the table that's unique that a man can is that I can bring that nurturing side where the man, you know, the male coach or the male counselor yeah. or the therapist or whatever is going to come and say, you know, suck it up, buttercup. Mm. You're a man, you know, be a man, be a man. And I'm like, no, there's, there's ways to go around that without shaming and judging and just coming from a place of like nurturing. So I believe that we are trying to go the right direction, but the men have to make that decision that they may not be in the right place. You know, they, they do need assistance. Not, we can't, and I did a post not too long ago. I said, if you are not getting help outside of your family and friends, for your mental health and we all have mental health issues right now i mean we're not no there's not one person that is not struggling with something because of what we're living in you know the world that we're living in and if you're not getting outside help for that beyond your family and friends then you're doing a disservice to your loved ones and everybody around you so it's just about making that decision and having that humility and being humble and being like you know what i don't know and I need help. But until they do that for themselves and not listen to YouTube videos and podcasts and things like that, because that's just a generalization of that person's mm. point of view. Yeah. What you need is you need a one-to-one -one type of thing where you can see what happened in your past. You know, what programs and beliefs did you were created for you? And it's gonna be unique to every single person. So yes, I do believe that we are going in the right direction, but I think that it needs to be more of a one-to-one -one type of help where you have to go deep. You're, everybody's just gonna have to go deep. I'm gonna let you listen to this and tell me what you think actually. Um, is this one? The real G and a simp is once she no longer adheres to your creeds, once she no longer is benefiting your life in real time, once she shows disrespect for your generosity, 
instead of continuing to give to her, and instead of continuing to chase her, and continuing to allow her to benefit from who you are as a man, without complimenting you for who you are as a man, you stop talking to her. Yeah. That's the difference between a gene and a sin. A lot of people say, oh, bro, look, he bought her a bunch of champagne, he's a sin. No, absolutely not. If he meets a beautiful woman and she makes his life better, and he takes care of her, absolutely, and she genuinely protects his spirit and prays for him and loves him with all of her heart, there is nothing simply in any regard by giving her the best possible version of life. But if she decides to disrespect you, well, then it's a different thing, right? A simple continue to give, a real G1. Difference. So. What is your opinion there? Because I know a lot of us as a man, we talk a lot about respect as well because we feel like we don't get respect enough from the woman. Women, they attempt to like compare you to their father, to somebody good in the family, but then we don't feel like appreciate. And then when the small time that we feel like you have to give us a credit about something, you always remind us that, oh, you know what? You know how many things I do? So if you do one thing, great. What should I have to do? They have to thank you for that. I think in a woman's mind, you don't understand how much we appreciate just you recognizing the effort that we actually put in. And yeah, and it definitely goes both ways. And that recording, I 100% agree with, you know, there's, there's a lot of women out there that take advantage of the men's generosity. And as soon as they don't add to that, as soon as they don't 10 exit, you know, so to speak, I know that that's a, like a big buzzword now. As mm. soon as they don't 10 X your life, then yeah, absolutely. Don't, don't pursue her. Don't chase her. Don't spend your energy on that person. And that's, again, if you continue to do that, that's coming from a wounded place. That's coming from a place that you're not anchored into your own self-worth. And the woman, you know, if the woman is playing the long game, I had this come up with a, a client and he was saying how the, you know, on the dating apps that the women will, or there was this one woman that nurtured the relationship for a couple of months. I don't know if they ever went on like a one-to-one -one date. And then she asked them to borrow $200 after two months. If she's doing this with 10 people. She's made two grand. Like that's, that makes me embarrassed to be a woman when I hear that kind of stuff. So yeah, whenever people are talking about, you know, uh, appreciation and when they are generous, as long as the man is coming from a place of, I'm going to, I'm going to give without expectation, then you're going to get the same reciprocal on the same side. Does that make sense? So whatever yeah. you're putting out, you're going to be getting back. But if you're coming from a place of, I'm going to buy you this Louis Vuitton purse so you'll sleep with me, well then look at what energy you're putting out. It, you know, what are you attracting into your life? If you're attracting a gold digger, there's something going on inside of you. So where, yes, there is a time to point the finger at the woman, but at the same time, you got to turn the finger back around to you because we, we create our own reality. We have to take accountability for everything that is going on in our lives. If we're buying purses and trips and things like that for a woman and she's still not 10 xing our lives, then there's something going on with you. Let her go and figure out what's going on with you and why you even attracted that type of woman into your life. Great. Um, I think you, uh, you went to the whole thing, but there's anything that you feel that like we haven't really mentioned about this topic and that uh, you just wanted to add something before we actually wrap it up. And two things um, I'm going to ask you before mm -hmm. you actually say that. The first question is, what can you tell to those men today? Because I know that like, we are reaching the new year. Everybody want to make a re resolution today. Mm -hmm. For men who are actually struggling to become a man who feel like, I know you give a lot of service as well for people who actually want some help. She's actually a trans transformation coach. So you can actually get in touch with Nicole. I'm going to put all the information in the description as well, how to get in touch with her. So just want you to tell me like for, for men today who want to like fix his life, become like a real man, as you said, mm -hmm. and also for women who feel like they need to make some change, what kind of support do you think they should do? One of the simple steps. Sorry for the question. I know it's a little bit. That's yeah. okay. I know uh, one of the answers is of course to get in touch <laughs> with you because at least with you, you can actually give them you know, coach them and then, you know, have more interaction. But for just beginners, mm -hmm. somebody just want to have a little bit of, you know, 
information for the stock? The best thing to do is to start having gratitude for everything that you have in your life, because the more things that you're grateful for, the more the universe is going to bring to you. So a great New Year's resolution is go out and buy a $2 journal at the Dollar Tree or whatever, get yourself a pen and start writing what you're grateful for every single day, every morning that you wake up. Um, and then, you know, even I know that this is adding a little bit more of a step, but meditate. Meditation is so transformational for the soul, for the spirit, for the for the body. I feel like it's it has taken years off of my face. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Every time I meditate, I go and look in the mirror and I'm like, wow, I think I just got younger. Or I just look completely different because I do it first thing in the morning and I don't look like I just woke up, you know, and rolled out of bed. I look like all fresh and, you know glowy and so yeah meditation and gratitude journaling um are two of the the things that i would recommend starting off in the beginning yeah great so how do people can get in touch with you actually for people who just like listen to this and feel like they want to get in touch with you so you can go to my website nicoleharmony.com and there's a couple of uh, little freebie downloads that you can do one is the five minutes five minute mental health check-in and then um that's where all my social media is. I've, you know, I've got a private Facebook group called uh, Mindful Living for Men, and TikTok, Facebook, uh, Instagram, you name it. <laughs> I'm out there sharing the message. <laughs> okay, that, that, that's great. Are you working on something right now? Something like you want to share with us? Anything? Any project? Or for Not now, you don't have anything working. on? Not yeah, nothing live. Since I just came from working with uh, women, I had my first retreat in uh, the spring uh, in Belize, but that's sold out. So that's nothing. But um, <laughs> so I do, but I do have small group coaching and then one-to-one -one coaching as well that uh, I offer specifically for men. So yeah. And again, it focuses on purpose, polarity, and partnership. Those three are the that's the three magic for the recipe for a happy life great so yeah nicole i just want to say again thank you for for today i know it's been thank a you. crazy uh session that we had today <laughs> but the okay. conversation at the end it was very good i'm gonna add everything together and i apologize again for the technical issue you know like yeah it's a new system and then again no for worries. people who want to get in touch with nicole i'm gonna put everything on the description as well please do and we all need to change. We all need to become like better version. We do need people like yourself. And yes. uh, please, the only thing I can actually suggest you is to put more pressure on men because trust me, no. we are losing ourselves. We are depressed. We don't really know what we should no. do. And because we feel like society, especially men like myself, we feel like we are not heard. The type of mm -hmm. men that you are talking about, they are, they are not, the word today, society don't like them. Yeah. They feel yeah. like we, they, they just don't like it. They, they feel like they are so maybe aggressive. They are macho. They are, they describe them in like many ways. They, they want to get rid of those type of men. But at the same time, yeah. we are so small, a small group of people. We, we need women like yourself because when women recognize the need to have those type of men in today's society, that's the only way we can actually get up and, you know, mm -hmm. show our force and then, you know, teach the, the same thing to all the men as well. But if you guys are silenced, yeah no matter how much we want to bring the change, the change will never going to happen because we're going to do those things for you, actually. Yeah. Because if you do that for you, you guys are going to give back the same energy that we're actually giving you, and then the world is going to be a better place. But this is not what is actually happening right now. Everything is just all over the place. I know. Yeah. The, men, the men going the other way, you know, manosphere and that type of thing, I'm like, no. No. <laughs> no, that's the wrong way to go. <laughs> no. Yeah, I mean, we, we yeah. are just like, and then children, that's the reason why, if we are becoming so weak, women are kind of like, women are taking our part now, but the yeah. fact that women are become, becoming men, but they still need that, that energy. I mean, they still need that soft uh, energy coming from us, that security. But they don't want to have it because they are giving so much of men energy. And when you find out, when you meet this kind of woman, you cannot even attract your spirit or your soul with the woman because there is no balance. Yeah. And yeah. with our ego as well, when you see a woman acting like a man, if you are, you, if you are already less than man because of the way society is actually pushed us, 
How can you even survive around this woman? You can't. She can look attractive, but nothing can. You, you, the relationship one but one last step actually. It's just gonna be argument after argument. Yeah. And ego. And may I add one thing? Yeah, sure, <clears throat> you can. Yeah. A really good barometer to if you're out there dating or even if you're already in relationship to see how well is going to be received your leadership as a man is to just try to plan something without asking the woman just say hey i am going to come pick you up or if you live together hey honey be ready at 7 30 we have reservations you know this is kind of like the the attire that i want you to wear and i can't wait to see you and i can't wait to spend time with you and you know having that quality time just see how that is going to be received. And if it is not received, and oh my God, thank God, I don't have to think about something, then, you know, then there's a couple of steps and there's some communication that needs to happen within the relationship. If you're truly you come, wanting to be a leader. Since we're talking about a relationship, when it comes to intimacy here as well, like so when it comes to sex as well, does mm -hmm. it work the same way as well? Because sometimes oh, yeah. men feel like, <laughs> because, yeah, because I'm, I'm not going to lie to you because sometimes men feel like we, um, we don't want to be too pushy. You want to request or if you like this or if you don't like this or men want something but they cannot really ask the woman because they feel like she's going to be, she's going to be like, oh, it's too much. That's why a lot of people, even online, people always say every time a man want to have sex with a woman, they always give a lot of excuses like, I'm tired, I'm doing this, I'm doing this. Just in general, do you feel like, is it the same way? Or when it comes oh, to yeah. sex, it's different. Well, okay. So if you're not in a committed relationship. You know, I'm talking about people uh, who are actually yeah. in a relationship, married. Oh, or yeah. They yeah. Do, like live together. Not like just sleeping around. I don't. I mean, me personally, I don't know of a woman that would not respond in a positive way if her man just came in, came in and like threw her over his shoulder and took her to the bedroom, you know, being that leader, having that primal. But here's the other thing is that if the woman is wanting the man to do that, then see how it would be for her to be primal. You know, if he's saying, if he's kind of like not cowering back, but you know, just, I don't know what the word is, but just kind of standing on the sidelines and allowing, you know, kind of her to take the lead maybe she needs to be that primal one in the beginning to show that she is open to it. But I would say as a man, I would try it out and just, again, see what the reception is, you know, see how many, it is being many received. Many men actually get rejected. I think it's something like many men don't talk about it, but many men actually get rejected by women. And it's something like women do recognize it as well, but I just don't know why they do that sometimes. And but it's so, different when women actually like when they want something for men it's different mm -hmm. because they always ask they show they want something and it's always easy for us to turn up yeah but when it's like the opposite is a lot of excuses but i don't think like we have the same way of seeing things sometimes so if i could form a theory around that is if the woman is burned out and she's in her masculine and she's having to do everything and then the man comes and asks for sex, there's the mm. polarity because she's so in her masculine and he's in his masculine asking for sex. Do you see how that would be oh, like okay. this? Yeah. Does that make sense? So must be that. if he is in that leadership role and he's leading, leading the relationship and she's not burned out, you know, with the kids and having to do everything and having to fix the, the house and do the dishes and, you know, wash the kids and, and go and do her career at the same time, if she's not burned out, then she will have that energy for sex. You know, she will have that connection to her partner, but if she's so far into her masculine and that masculine man is wanting sex then she's going to be like, uh, uh, no, I don't want that. Cause I'm tired. I, I don't even have a chance to come into my feminine. I don't feel feminine. So why mm. am I going to want to have sex? Oh man, this is like, I think that was the best <laughs> interpretation of, interpretation of why I just asked. I think, uh, your, your, I mean, your, your answer actually makes sense. I'm really glad to have you today because a lot of things that you say, you actually pull the puzzle together. It actually is so, it makes so much sense. And now I know why actually a lot of people actually act that way. Yeah. Many yeah. men having those issues, it's simple as we just mentioned earlier, 
many men are actually losing the ability to become like to be like the men they're supposed to be and the reason why a lot of people are having those kind of issues even in a relationship as well because when it comes to sex that's the time that you kind of want to step up and become that man but in all the areas as well it's like we only focus on the sex and the money part yeah because when it comes to sex you want to be the man you want to just want get it whatever you have and when it comes to the money and you just want to focus all the strength and the money as well being the one that pay everything you know putting all the pressure on the money but all the task mental support or other things at home you don't actually don't provide it and that's kind of create like the imbalance i think that's uh mm-hmm. yeah that's the answer of everything so thank you again man i'm really happy hopefully another day we're gonna have a another episode with you i really want to talk about all the things around relationship or mental health as well so yeah yeah